Hi, eighth grade scientists. This is Miss Kerr. I'm bringing you uh, molecular biology two notes, and those are on photosynthesis, and they are on page six of your packet. So today, you are going to be able to identify the reactants and products of photosynthesis. Remember that in chemistry, we studied that chemical reactions are going to have reactants, things that um, go into the reaction, and then we have products, things that come out of the reaction. So this is a chemical reaction that's happening. And I've got my handy dandy plant here. All right. Um, as soon as you think of photosynthesis, you should connect that with plants. So if it helps you to think of, you know, photosynthesis starting with a P, plant starting with a P, um, whatever helps you. And I've got my windows open in the back, the sun is shining in, so it's a beautiful day and we need sunlight for photosynthesis as well. All right, so what is photosynthesis? So as I just said, we need sunlight in order for this reaction to take place. Plants, flowers, trees, um, anything in that family are going to take in carbon dioxide that humans breathe out. They're going to take in water through their roots. And they're going to go through a chemical process called photosynthesis and then release oxygen into the air for then humans to breathe in. Um, they also create sugar, which we'll talk about in a minute. So at the top of your page, it says photosynthesis is the process. So you're going to copy this down in which plants create sugar and oxygen using carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. And here's our picture again. So they take in carbon dioxide and water. There has to be sunlight present. And then they're going to give off oxygen and also produce sugar. This part is not on your note page, but you do, this is, you do need to know this, and this is very important. So it says, nearly all living things obtain energy either directly or indirectly from the energy of sunlight captured during photosynthesis. And we're going to start with this little picture here. The sun is the source of energy for most living things. This is a really common EOG question. They'll say, what is the original source of energy for all living things? And the answer is sun. So it all comes back to, to the sun. Okay, so if we kind of look at a chain of events here, the sun gives life for plants, right? So plants such as grass use energy from the sun to make their own food. So they are autotrophs, producers. Then the zebra obtains the energy from eating the grass. So that zebra is an herbivore. They're eating the grass. And then we have a little bit behind my picture there, the lion obtaining energy by feeding on the zebra. And so even though the lion is directly eating the zebra, the lion wouldn't be able to eat the zebra unless the sun was there to produce this grass. So the original source of energy for all living things is the sun. All right, back to your note page. We have two stages of photosynthesis. Stage one is capturing the sun's energy. So how do these plants capture the sun's energy? So the first thing that happens is that chloroplasts in the plant cells um, in the leaves capture energy from the sun. So you learned about chloroplasts last year. And so the sunlight is entering those leaves and the cells in those leaves are capturing the energy. Stage two is using energy to make food. So the plant captures that sunlight and then water and carbon dioxide are used to produce sugar and food. 
So if we take a look at this caption here, the captured light energy is used to produce sugars and oxygen from water and carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide enters the leaf, water enters the plant through the roots. So we need both of those things. Um, and sunlight is creating the reaction and sugars and foods are produced inside that plant. Right, so then humans, we eat plants, not this house plant necessarily, but we eat broccoli, which is a plant for instance, okay? And so broccoli is going to use some of the energy, the sugar food that it produces. It's gonna use some of its own food it produces, but then when we eat that broccoli, um, we are gonna gain energy as well, and you'll learn about that in the next set of notes. Okay, so as we see here, sugars are produced and used in the plant. Okay, and then oxygen exits the stomata and humans use that to breathe. So here's our equation, and this is really important, you will need to know this. So we have six CO2, carbon dioxide, and six water molecules. So six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules. Then we have the sun, right? So it's not technically a reactant, but the sun has to be present. And our products are sugar, which is glucose, six, C6H12O6, and we have six oxygen molecules. So on your paper, you want to write that the reactants are carbon dioxide and water, like I have over here. That's what goes into the reaction. And then we have products, which are glucose, sugar, and oxygen. Okay, so glucose and sugar are um, used synonymously. So um, those mean the same things. Also, sometimes carbohydrates is used here too. So you want to know that all of those are synonyms, glucose, sugar, carbohydrates. And then the very last line that you're going to write in, and some of it is behind my picture here, so you're going to need to listen. Sugars are used to carry out functions in the cells. Sugars are used to carry out functions in the cells of this plant, right? So the plant needs those sugars that are produced to then live. All right, at the bottom of page six, you have a little picture that's gonna help you maybe remember some things. So just filling this in, um, you know, you need to remember that sun needs to be present, water needs to be present. Um, the leaves are gonna take in carbon dioxide, which are given off by the human, right? Humans breathe out carbon dioxide. And then, Products are going to be glucose and oxygen. So filling this in here, chloroplasts located in the plant leaves trap light energy and make food. So another thing you need to remember along with photosynthesis plants, you do need to remember those chloroplasts that you learned about last year. All right, so that finishes up photosynthesis. Hopefully um, you remember some of that information from years past. Um, the next section is gonna be on cellular respiration, which is probably a little bit uh, new um, and it builds off of photosynthesis. So if you remember photosynthesis and you can remember this really well, um, cellular respiration isn't that tricky and you'll find that out in the next notes.